This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. All right, everybody, and welcome to episode two of The Outcast with Buzz and Juice. Got my man Juice here. I am Buzz. Follow us on Twitter at MVP Buzzweed at MVP Juice Man. Um, if you're finding us on YouTube here, you know, drop a like, comment, a sub. That'd be great. You know, we try to comment to all you guys that were commenting on our first podcast that came out. We really appreciate all the good feedback that we got back and whatnot. It was awesome. Um, if you would like to get one of these awesome T-shirts that we're we got wearing, wear now that we that, yeah, we got wear. We got wear. You can go to uh, mostvaluablepodcast.com, order one of these awesome t-shirts that we are now rocking. Makes me really feel a part of the Most Valuable Podcast family, which is pretty good. Um, also, if you can go to patreon.com and uh, patreon.com slash mostvaluablepodcast and uh, donate, you can earn yourself some really awesome prizes, you know, some really cool things on that website, you know, private podcast, join an odd podcast, bunch of other cool stuff on there, so pretty cool stuff. Pretty cool stuff there. And then if you're hearing us on iTunes, you can uh, give us a, drop us a five-star rating. Comment on there. We'll try to comment to, back to you. I'm trying to, you know, stay stay with you guys all along the process. Every comment you guys do, we'll try to comment back, talk, you know. But we're mostly active on Twitter. Like that's, that's where you can probably get a hold of us the most. YouTube, I'm still trying to figure out that whole comment section. Yeah, come at me, bro. Oh, yeah, come at me. Not like come... Uh, uh, <laughs> Yeah, but we're here. We have an awesome show planned for you guys today. Hitting some baseball talk, hitting some uh, Bulls talk, hitting some Bears talk. You know, here covering all Chicago well, sports. First of all, let's start. I'm, I'm surprised we're not canceled yet. We're, oh, we were pretty. Yeah, man, we were pretty we're lame. Pretty lame we had a few. We had a few mistakes. I said. I, I think Especially I said with our feed, but some of our feedback and our YouTube. I was like, man, I, I thought I thought Ricky was going to come down and bring us put us back to the Burger King. Oh man, I don't want to go back to Burger King. Me neither. That's okay. Like you know, like like Conor McGregor said about I, the Irish, you know, mm-hmm. we're, we're not here to take part; we're here to take over. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Speaking of which, ten thousand subscribers on YouTube now, so oh, that's yeah. huge. Thank you, that, that's huge. great. So thank you to the fans. Uh, yeah. Also, like he said, thanks for uh, commenting on our on our video and uh, reaching out to us on Twitter. If, uh, if you followed us, I hope we followed you back. If we didn't, you know, just send us a DM saying, what the hell, man? You said you were going to follow me. Yeah, I tried. I, um, I tried to follow But everybody. we've been, like, overwhelmed with, like, yeah. how awesome this start has gotten. Yeah, there's we've been gotten a, off to. It's yeah. been pretty cool. Though. Yeah, there's been a lot of people, a lot of people commenting towards us. You know, it's it's been – the whole thing's been great all around. You know, I mean, feedback was pretty much good for the most part. I had a couple people. One guy said I looked like a meth head. Well, you know, you, you kind of – yeah. I could see it. Ah, okay. Well, I don't want to talk about I mean, that. You look like a cooler version of Joe Dirt, but that's just me. Joe Dirt couldn't even grow. Whatever. I'm not getting <laughs> this with you. But yeah, like I said, guys, you know, in the beginning, if you can just hit us up on YouTube, iTunes, you know, if you happen to visit Patreon, go ahead and donate all that cool stuff. Thank you for all the good, positive feedback that we did get and for the negative feedback we did get. Thank you for watching. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to talk to us. That yeah, means, we still it. means the world to all, us, even though if we messed up, we need a stat guy. We do. We're and we we might have one. Yeah, we might. Oh, all right. We're gonna see though. We actually have some really cool things in the making too. Oh yeah. Uh, currently, we've gotten a pretty cool call. Um, I'm not gonna hint at it. I'm not gonna name what's up the. Well, uh, well you got up the, the call. sleeve. Well, we got the call. Right. I mean, so you don't it's, need to hint at it, but I no. can I hint at no, it? No, you can't. No, I can't. No. Um, it might be on the table. Something great is on the table. If you're only listening, you're not going to see then, this. Then you're not going to see but it. But if you're watching something that I'm doing right now, we may have something with that. But all right, we're, we'll see. We will, we'll it's, see. It might be in the making. Who knows? We'll uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. This bridge we need to cross today is into uh, now. Episode one was kind of like our intro, uh, yeah. kind of introducing your the viewers to us and now it's um this is off and running now yeah absolutely. so we're gonna try to throw some segments into the show things that we're gonna try to do every time um but we might not um based on feedback and based on um what we uh if we can come up with uh, 
a good theme for it. Um, we've already came up with a with a name with it. I, I would love you to introduce that, man. That's all. Uh, this is our segment. It's called "I Got Five on It." I got five on it. So if you remember the uh, the song from that was the '90s, wasn't it? Yeah. Once we get a soundboard, we'll, we'll plug. We'll in. have the we'll "I Got Five on It." Yeah. yeah. Have, yep. That's also something we're kind of working on. So yeah, we got a lot that's going down the down the pipeline right now so but we're gonna we're gonna introduce i got five on it all right let's do it Would so you, like you to guys can play around we're segment? gonna we're gonna do this new segment in um i got five on it. it's gonna be five things that are huge for this this one for example is gonna be five things i got five on it five things that are on your cubs or my cubs your white Sox. all right and can um, other people do other teams if they want to throw five absolutely. on it okay there you go we're gonna all do right. for the we're gonna try to stick with uh this conversation first, though. Right. So comment below. Um, I got five on it. If you are a Cubs or a White Sox fan, you're five most important players for your team. Awesome. So I'd love we're gonna, for you to kick it off. Man. We're going to start. Um, I got five on it with the Cubs, all right, because I'm a Cub fan. Um, I'm going to name five up to one, my most, my so least from, important all the way up, oh, oh, to, okay. up to my most important. I, I didn't make my list that way. But, okay. Well, okay. you can kind of. All right, cool. Can, um. Five, Wilson Contreras, I think, is the fifth most important on this top five list. Um, going into last year, I was a big Wilson guy. I uh, I had the same um, idea that he was going to be that good, good last year. And before he got hurt with his hamstring, he was having he was an MVP tear. He was in an MVP conversation. He wasn't going to win MVP, but um, he was in that conversation. Um, I think that the thing for Wilson is to stay healthy. He needs to grow with. There's a lot of new pitchers on this. This yeah, uh, he's going to be learning a lot. He's, he's going to have to be, and he. This makes the the argument for him at the five spot. He is the right-handed bat that is going to hit behind your. You know, you're getting out of Rizzo and Bryant. They're going to be mashers. They're going to be in that lineup. They're probably going to hit 300, around 30 home runs, driving 100 apiece. Wilson Contreras, if he could be that guy who is that third, you know, that third head, headed dragon. Lineup. Yeah, right. And hit 30 home runs and drive in 100, which that was his goal going into the year. Um, that lineup is transformed into something that, that is crazy at that point. It gives it's, me chills, right. man. The, your hitting lineup gives me chills. Well, like I, I know we're doing, you know, I got five on it right now, but I think about it and I get so excited for next week when baseball, when actually, baseball starts. actually starts. All right, man, keep going. I'm sorry. I just get all excited. No, it's that. fair. And My, I, I want to say one thing. I am a Sox fan who got excited about a Cubs lineup. He could vouch for me. Not a Cubs hater. No, absolutely not. And it, it's both ways because I've, I've never, I've never hated the White Sox either. No, absolutely. Um, four, my fourth most important, um, Kyle Hendricks. I yep. think Kyle Hendricks um, needs to take that extra step, and he has to in a lot ace. of ways. Um, he needs to become the ace of the squad as Lester gets older. Um, obviously, they've lost Jake Arrieta for like the big games, and he was huge in the playoffs. Yeah, he was great. Um, Hendricks needs to take that staff over and become what I think he could be. Right. I think, uh, and that's, that's going to come with staying healthy Mm -hmm. because last year he was having a good year, kind of starts out slow every year. It seems like he doesn't get off to the start. He he should get off to, but I'm okay with that. I'm fine with him being a second half pitcher. Mm -hmm. Um, but he needs to stay healthy, become the staff as Lester falls off. You don't know what you're getting out of you Darvish because, well, we all think that you Darvish could be a great player. I do. I think he's going to be a great pitcher. I think he's been great for the Cubs. He is coming off, you know, a year ago with with surgery, and his last year didn't leave a good taste in his mouth going into the postseason. Right. Um, he had a great run with yeah, the did, Dodgers. Yeah. But if you look at that first half of the year with uh, with the Rangers, he didn't pitch very well, and that's kind of why they didn't get the most for him. Right. And that's why the Dodgers. Can, I mean, they got a huge haul because obviously it's huge, huge Darvish, and it's right. It's the trade deadline. You always pay more, but. Um, yeah, that that's my fourth uh, most important. My third, Kyle Schwarber, yeah, coming yeah, back. I think from, he's on the mind of every Chicago. Cubs yeah, and fan as he and should. going to be, he's, and I, he's in tremendous shape. If you've seen pictures, yeah, of him. he's he's lost a lot of weight. I think um, Kyle's put his um, best foot forward for this season. Good. He's been um, able to lose the weight, and he's been working crazily at, at his craft. Obviously, last year and wasn't still the year that he wanted. You, correct. I, he's going to platoon out there. I think that he's. Get to end up not getting. They got to find a place for all these guys to play. I know, um, but I do think that come the playoffs, that left-handed bat, and if he's able to steal more bases than he used to, he's a, he's a great base runner, and um, he's already had four home runs this spring, mm-hmm. and he's had close to he had three steals in one game. I, it was early on in the in the spring in spring training, but 
Um, I think that he is very important because he's a left-handed power bat. Mm-hmm. And other than Rizzo, they don't really have a huge left-handed power bat. Hap, but Hap, I think, is going to end up being more of your leadoff guy. Right. Um, and it's not going to be a spot for him to really do a lot of damage. Um, Kyle's going to hit in that fifth or sixth spot, and he's going to have to be the guy at the bottom of the order wrecking havoc because you know your Bryant and your Rizzo aren't going to chase pitches. They're going to get on base. Contreras sitting no slouch. Contreras, too, is going to work a count. And going through that part of the lineup, Kyle's going to be expected to drive in a lot of runs at that at that spot. Right. So going to my second one, okay. and it's a guy that isn't even on the team. Okay. He's not a Cub. I think Brad Hand is, and he's a reliever for the Padres. Um, he's going to be a trade chip because San Diego is not going to make the playoffs. Um, so he's something that you're trying to look forward my, to. My question is, is do the Cubs get in on that? Because if you look at the back end of their bullpen, there's a lot of question marks. Um, obviously, you don't know what you're going to get out of Justin Wilson. You don't you know what you're going to get out of uh, Carl Edwards because he's always two-faced. He's hot. He's cold. Um, and I think that maybe Brad Hand could come in and kind of provide some stability. Also, if he doesn't come here, who does he get traded to? As you see in baseball, these these huge um, major league teams, these bullpens, once it hits the playoffs, are even more huge than the hitting. Right. Um, having a shutdown guy to shorten the game to the fifth inning and to really get those starters out when they're getting the second and third appearance – I think are uh, it's huge for the Cubs to have a huge bullpen mm-hmm. and a bullpen that could shut down at the end of the game. And if you look at the names of the guys that are in the pen right now, it's a lot of question marks. Um, I like Edwards. I'm a, I like CJ. I like I like Edwards. I like um, Justin Wilson. Yeah, and this, this kind of transitions into my number one. Um, I think the most important Cub for this year is Brandon Morrow. Uh, they signed him for a decent. I love that man. A That's decent, good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. I they signed it. him to a huge deal. Not a huge deal. Really, kind of player friendly ish. Um, this this is the deal that the Cubs signed really quick. Um, Tyler Chatwood was obviously the first that they kicked off. This, he's our fifth starter. But um, going into um, the off season, addressing the bullpen was huge. And it was almost like they knew Wade Davis was going to leave because he got paid. Yeah. Well, um, but I think it's huge that he needs to stay healthy mm-hmm. because he hasn't stayed healthy in the past. Obviously, last year he did, and he had a great season, but he was the eighth inning guy. Right. So that's the can he be the closer? Um, if he fails, who's the closer? It's not Edwards because Edwards is – we've tried that before. Right. He's not that guy. Think it lights a fire under him? I, I think that – in baseball, the like way for to get a good paid. competition yeah, between I, him and Morrow? I, I do. I hope that CJ gets the first crack at the games that Morrow can't go. Um, but I think it'd be good for Morrow because closers are the ones that get paid out of the bullpen. Oh, yeah. Well, and this contract, while he got more than a lot of people thought he would, I think it was pretty fairly said team friendly. Okay. Um, so going into this year, I think that's huge for. So those, that's my that's my I got five on it. Okay. Right. Um, I know that we're gonna throw it over to your White Sox here. All right, man. I got five on it. So this was really, really, really hard for me to to pick because we have so many, we have so many prospects that well, are that prospects. are up there. I I know, no, I know. I, I I absolutely know that. But I wanted to focus. I mean, at least for on the major league roster. on the major league roster where fans who are familiar with people that were up there. I mean, obviously, I'd love to pick. You know your Nicky Delmonico for somebody that you would watch because he came up and made a huge impact last year as you know he was right he was that dude was on fire Mm -hmm. but um this is my you um you got five on it here so Mankata Yoan Mankata he is my first they moved him to the leadoff role for the White Sox this year which is huge that's a big task and if you if you guys know like in my opinion for the White Sox the last good leadoff hitter we had was Scott Pesetnik Mm mm-hmm and I don't care what anybody says. He was the last good leadoff hitter that I that is a house. Which I'll touch name. on that too. Mancada, I think that the leadoff position has obviously changed in baseball. It's more right um, on base percentage. Exactly. Stuff. Um, I think that this move putting him in the leadoff transitions the team into a new um, era. Because really, if you look at it, it's not speed guys who steal bases anymore. It's let's let's get these guys at the top of the lineup to try to get as most at bats as we can. Well fun fact about Mankata over the last two years of being in the minors before he came on over to the majors, he stole ninety four bases in two years in minor league. Wow. 
That's a lot. See, I, I would have guessed a little less than that. Yeah, I, so it's nice. I know he can run. I yeah. know he's a very good he's athlete. A good base obviously runner. playing second base. Right. Um, so Mankata, I actually read an awesome article today. I wish I can credit the article on where I read it because I cannot I cannot remember. But um Mankata, they're saying that has a the chance to be the first White Sox player ever to hit thirty home runs in a season and to steal 30 bases. This kid's got power. We know this kid has power. Right. It's all about him getting comfortable on the major league level. Because mm-hmm. what he was doing in, in AA Birmingham and AAA Charlotte was, I mean, that's the stuff that superstars, are, you know, you talk about superstars and what they did down there, and he was doing that. So I, they're saying that he, I love that, because they're saying that he had the potential to be a 30-30 and 30 guy, which has never been done in White Sox history. And the last uh, Cub to do it, can you name him? Oh. I remembered it in my head for you. 30 not, and 30. Not Alfonso Soriano because he came over that year. He has to done be, it. Has but done he, it, but not for not Cubs. The Cubs. Exactly. Was that, was that the question? No, well, no. no. I, the last one for right. the Cubs to do it for you. Oh, man. Uh, Murdy Banks? No, it was Sammy. Oh, the, okay. Before that his, makes... And he did it twice. He did it 95 and I want to say 98, really? 97, 90, Before he, See, he found his the body, Cubs said, I don't know. Yeah, before his body changed. Yeah, but yes, changed. Yes. But he did and it I'm twice. a big Sammy guy. As, as we'll I'm, learn on the pod, I, Sammy Sosa is the reason I I thought you would love that Cubs. stat, man. No, that was, it was a great – got to find that article. I'll, I'll, I cannot remember where I found that article earlier, but it was really good. Sammy Sosa. Um, the second person is the uh, – that I got on the um, – you know, you got five on it is, is Timmy, Tim Anderson. Mm-hmm. So right behind Mankata, our one-two punch. These guys are badass fielders, number one. Number two, Timmy's coming off a sophomore slump because when he came up, the kid was hitting the ball. Right. He was hitting the ball. He had a sophomore slump last year, but he raised it towards the end of the season. I think Timmy could be a 270, 280 hitter. Mm-hmm. I think um, in field. Right. He's, and, he's, he's got to work on his on his fielding. Yeah, he um, does. I mean, but he makes some spectacular plays. That he does. You know, he's either – it's a hit or miss with him, man. He's going to get it or he ain't. So he's my second coming off a sophomore slump. I'm really thinking I if you have him and Jan Mankata as your number one and number two, you're going to have some guys on base this right. year, which mm-hmm. I'm very, very excited about. You know, going into your three and four, which I'm assuming this year are probably going to be a Bray, you and Davidson. Yeah. And Avi. Yeah, you're going to need. You know, because you got your power right there. You're going to need some. So you're going to need some guys on base. So as you're seeing, as the White Sox are finally not building towards one through nine, the batting line order can hit home runs. Right. They're getting, which is finally, they're getting people that can get on base so your home run hitters can produce RBIs. Well, that's all baseball. I mean, around the league, you really look at it, a lot of guys who, a lot of teams, per se, who are in the spot of, I don't really need to win now because they're trading off the assets they have. Right. Your, your Cubs and Astros type deal. Right. They're stockpiling minor leagues like your White Sox are doing. Right. And they're bringing up guys who, A, have a lot of pop and mm-hmm. a lot of power, but a lot of discipline with that power. Um, that's how the Cubs won the World Series in 2016. They were the most patient. And they hit a lot of home runs. Right. They that's the long ball still is huge. It's still in dominant. Baseball. No doubt about it. And if you look at the the way the game is trending now, as home runs become more and more uh, influential to the game, which we talked about on which podcast we, one with the ball, right, is something that um, you need to stockpile your lineup throughout, not just your three, four, five hitters. Exactly. So that's I see that. and that's great for for the White Sox. Yeah, I think they're doing I think they're doing something special. So this next this next one um, I got on my uh, you have five on it was uh, I had a really hard hard choice here. Um, I really wanted to pick Eloy Jimenez because you know he might be coming up this year. The way he the way he's treating people down in yeah in, there's in there's not much time spring you training. can keep him down no, there he's until have he to come up. isn't really learning too much from right. Being well, down I, there. I, he I think he takes center field honestly. When he gets up here, because it's between Adam Engel well, and, see, I, and Ryan Cornell. In a, in a perfect world, you trade Avi and, first, in, and you put him in right. Because yeah, because that's I like Engel, so yeah. But he, um, he deserves to have right field. Though. Right. My third pick is uh, Lucas Giolato, which is going to be our our second pitcher, I believe, in the lineup here. Who's looked really good? Yeah, Rick Rick hasn't set the lineups yet. I mean, he's kind of given us a hint today, actually, on who the starting five is going to be. With uh, of course, with Rodon being out with his injury. Um, but this is the thing that I was kind of like talking to you about when you, you know, the competition between your closers between Morrow and Edwards. I feel there's going to be a competition here because I think Giolato, how he's shown what he had last year in his arsenal, he's shown in the spring training what he has. Rodon is going to be coming back from injury, and Rodon is going to want that ace position. This mm-hmm. dude is the third overall pick in the 2014 draft, Rodon. But Giolato has showed me more. 
and even coming off Tommy John. Right. He has showed me more than Rodon has in his years with the White Sox. I just wonder, like, as this this whole plan um, forwards, what that like the Cubs brought in John Lester, mm-hmm. and that was the guy that was going to pitch her big games. With the White Sox, it's going to be totally different because you're going to have at least five guys to be in that that rotation, and it's almost going to be like a competition to be the guy. Well, we can always and find... we're going to talk about that with a different team right. later on in the pod, but right. We can competition to be I'm sorry to cut you off, no, but fine. competition to be the guy in this rotation with this young, it's, it's I think huge. is a lot better set than you know, obviously the Cubs have paid for a lot of their pitching. The White Sox are not gonna have to do that. They well, might let's hope not. Well, right. Going I think the White Sox in free agency will end up spending more money in, in the bullpen yeah. and maybe position players than the Cubs did. The Cubs kind of paid starting pitchers. Right. So the White Sox, really, when you look at it, you're going to have your Giolito. You're going to have your Ronaldo, your Ronaldo Lopez. Lopez. You're going to have Dylan Cease. You're going to have Kopech. You're going to have four guys there who are going to be young, and they're going to be all competing to be the ace. Right. And competing for ace money at that point, too, because right. once they come up to the major leagues, the clock's on when they get paid. Well, and that's the thing about Giolito is, like, you know, everybody – and this is just even going back two years. The one-two punch of Chris Sale and Jose Quintana mm-hmm. was feared. I don't care if we sucked. Right. It was feared because no one can hit off these people. Which I'm so happy he's in a Cub uniform. Hey, I'll tell you what, man. For I, I was telling I was telling Juice here. Um, I had read an article again. I wish I could cite the the website, um, but I can't. But it was stack guy. Yeah, I need a stack guy. But um, <laughs> article guy. Article guy, stack guy, whatever. <laughs> but um. Jose Quintana was so grateful to stay here in Chicago, which I love that. I, I love that. But, right. man, my third was uh, was Giolato. I think that he can prove to be the ace. And then if Dylan Cease and Michael Kopech want to come up and give a little bit of friendly competition, I'd love that too. But Rodon, I don't know yet. My fourth is Jose Abreu. Jose Abreu is going to be playing for a contract. Jose, Fair. But the reason I like to keep – and this I've, I've touched on this in the first episode. My, you, you have to watch him. You know what Jose Abreu is going to give you. He's going to have a slow start. Then he's going to come out in May and hit 380 with eight, seven, seven, eight, nine home runs and, and you know, get his average back up there. He's going to consistently hit for you. Very slow starts with Jose Abreu. But now that he's getting later in his career and all this youth is coming from where he's from. Right. You know, I mean, again, I said it in the first – the first podcast here, the Cuban connection, that, that, that's for real. Mm-hmm. I think he's going to take less money to stay here. I just want to keep an eye on him all year because I really want to see if his veteran presence shines through. And then um, my fifth is, my fifth, you know, pick here is, is Rodon. And the reason it's Rodon is because I do believe that Rodon has some fire. I, I believe he has some stuff. And uh, if he wants, in, in this crowded pitching lineup that the Sox had for starters, and I'm not ruling out Carson Fulmer by any means necessary because I had a really hard time picking between Rodon and Fulmer for my five here. Because Fulmer, he finally had a good outing two days ago. Um, but other than that, he is really looking like a reliever to me. Maybe a best-case scenario is set up, man. I don't know if he's going to be able to be a starter. But when Rodon comes back from his injury, he's, he did some throwing today, actually. Um, if, when he comes back from his injury, I would really like to see – what happens? Does he get handed that ace role if we go through two months of the season and Giolato's got a 2.30 ERA or something like that? You know, right. Does he get handed the ace spot? And that's what I'm, I'm wondering. But it, like I said, for the White Sox, for your Cubs, I feel like it's an easier pick. You guys are established. You're a badass baseball team. You're winners. You know what's going on. We're, we're a bunch, we were where you were in 2013, 2014, 2015. We're, that's where we're at right, right now. We're trying to figure out who we are what we're going to be, and I feel that um, Rick Hahn has done nothing but the best for this franchise uh, with all these with all these acquisitions of um, of prospects because, you know, a lot of them are turning out. The only thing that I, I do not like, and I feel like that someone is in Rick Hahn's ear about it, <clears throat> Kenny Williams, is bringing these guys up too early. I do think Mankata came up too early last year. But how he's hitting right now in spring training – the confidence that he seems to have behind him in his new role with Rick Renteria. And I, I, I do still believe, and people aren't going to like this, I still do believe that Rick Renteria is the, unfortunately it's going to happen to him with two Chicago teams. Ah, oh, man, I, I really hope not. I hope I not. I hope against it. I hope against it too. I, I felt, I as think a Cub fan, I think he's going this, into it, I felt so bad when it got to the end and it, it was like, all right, all this talent's coming up. He had dealt with a lot of bad Bad baseball for yeah, and they and just he finally said, got a good but, team. But I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I was very pleased the fact that Joe Madden was my my manager at the right. end of the end of the day. But well, you know, we do I mean, have Jerry, and Jerry Reinsdorf is one loyal guy, 
And uh, but that's, that's I think Rick's gonna get a shot. That's I, mine, man. I, I, I really do. enjoyed yours. I really enjoyed that you actually threw somebody that wasn't a part of the team in there, like you know, just to be on the lookout. I thought that was really cool. So I really enjoyed yours. Yeah, was, no, we're great. gonna we're gonna work. I got five on it as much as we can. Oh no, I um, dude, I because we thoroughly, can do that with every team. I thoroughly enjoyed that. That was fun. We need we need a little little play in. Oh, I we know. Little, I, I got. Can you do it? I got five on it. Yeah, I don't want to. <laughs> All right. I, can I do the rap part where I swear? No? Of course you can. All right. Um, would you like to transition? Absolutely. All right. We're going to transition into some Chicago Bulls talk. But before we do, if you guys have any comments you want to make on what we just talked about with the Cubs and with the White Sox, please let us know. You know, we, <laughs> me and Kyle are huge. Juice, Kyle, whatever you want to call them. We're huge, huge <laughs> You know, baseball fans. So, like, you know, we're always trying to go to games when we have the chances. It can be getting harder for me to be able to do this. Yeah, that's the, a, we should we should address the uh, the elephant in the room. What's that? Oh, oh, yeah. This this man. Next time you view a podcast, may be a father. Yeah, I probably this will probably be the last podcast that we have without me having a baby here, which I am super excited for. But I'll tell you, man, it, knowing me and Kyle, how close we've been for years, that baby will be in a stupid ass car seat in our cars on the way to the cell. It's the cell. Yeah, always is the cell. I'm not calling it Comiskey because we. See, were... I'm kind of hoping that she'd be. She's just a Cub fan because she just looks at Chris Bryant's dreamy eyes and goes, I'm "She's going gonna to be the a blues lesbian." <laughs> <laughs> That's so, something your father would say. Yep. So anyway, um, so that that way we can bond together and be like, "Oh yeah, that chick's hot," you know. <laughs> we got that. only only you would spin that in some way. That, Absolutely, uh... <laughs> damn lutely. But no, we'll be either going to the cellar or we'll be going to Wrigley to have. You we know, should have go fun Bulls talk Kyle. before we uh, we get canceled here. Oh my god, that's so funny though. All right, yeah, but transitioning into Bull talk, Bulls talk, Bull talk. Mark Chanowski from CSN Sports did a uh, interview the other day. There's a two part interview. Only one part is up online for some reason. I cannot find the other part. I didn't really extensively search for it on YouTube. But yeah, uh, the kid's got a baby coming. Give yeah, exactly. Break. I've been busy. Give him a break. But uh, I sent it to Juice Man's. Um, Twitter, so if you guys want to actually find it, you can probably find it on his Twitter. I had tagged him in it. Yeah, but while you're following me. It was the Big Three. The Big Three were sitting in a, which is, if you don't know, Chris Dunn, Zach Levine, and Lowry Markkinen. Where, you know, they're talking, they have the Big Three conversation and all that, which I love the Bulls. I'm a diehard Bulls fan, I mean, to the ends of the earth. Um, what made me feel really uncomfortable in this interview was... Well, first of all, the, the the whole interview in general was really uncomfortable. Yeah, it was. It I, was. It made me feel uncomfortable. First of all, I, I, I love what – and I know that, like, the Bulls are bad, so they're really trying to pop conversation out of anywhere that they can. Right. And But to call them a big three when one of them is a free agent – At the end of the year. At the end of the year is something that I'm like, well, why are we jumping the ship here? Right. I would have loved to have each of them have their own interview. And see what they and want. And to see what they, they want for the team. Right. Opposed to them sitting together. And kind of, I felt like a lot of that was like. Forced. Su- it forced and super awkward. Yeah, it was like, awkward. It, for them, especially because there's both so, all three of them are so young and so unproven. I mean, we've seen Laurie Market in. I think Lowry has I, I think I think Lowry's going to be a great player. Me too. Don't get me wrong. I love what I see. But we said these same things about plenty of other, you know, shooting stars that. That were here and then they're gone. I don't want to say that he's that because obviously as a Bulls fan, I'm rooting way against that. Well, he's also a Euro. Right. Euros don't typically leave unless they're forced no, out. So no, that's good. I'm not saying leave the team. I'm saying right. maybe his oh, game fall falls off. off. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But looking at it, I'm like, man, like Chris Dunn had just been told by Sacramento or not uh, the Timberwolves. Sorry about right. that. Right. Not not Sacramento. The Timberwolves. That hey, you're not our guy. Like you're you're out. Okay, and I know they didn't get much of a chance when he he was got no chance because his coach with, with was the Tom Thibodeau. But going into it, I'm like, all right, he's had a good year. He's he's gotten hurt. He's been the electric guy that. But we don't know if Chris Dunn is a part of a big three. I mean, really, they, they with the way the tank's going, they could tank all the way down to four and get what Porter Jr. and he's your big one. Yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, right, right, right. To to label this this squad as their big three, and I know that like like we said, they're really trying to it's pop a, a rabbit out of a hat with it's content. All, it's all called optimism. It's right. optimism it, from but it's, Chicago. But it's super high, way early optimism. Oh yeah, opinion. man, it, it's far fetched. Right to the point where really, when you look at it, the interview, was so awkward. The titles of it were awkward. Everything about it was like, well, as I watched it. 
I'm like, this is way too early for conversations like this. Who's going to lead? Well, and to touch on it, we're going to touch oh, on I who's going to lead, which is your that's that's your, I can't you, wait to you're going to dive, gonna dive in. real hard into that. Yeah. Who's the lead? Who's to establish who's a leader yet? They're you all really done essentially right. in their rookie year. Right. So, well, I mean, I mean well, besides Levine. Levine's yeah, been there. But He's he's a guy who's on a one year contract essentially with the Bulls. Well, right. Well, he's, he's an RFA. He, he might not be back. Right. If they decide you know, not to match, right. Absolutely. Right. Th- which, this is the thing where it gets me it, it, is when he, they're talking about leaders. And if you guys watch that interview with Mark Shanowski, it's like Levine says, "Well, I have to lead this way." Then Dunn says, "I have to lead this way." Then they go to Lowry, and Lowry feels so awkward. Have that pop next time in the mic. We want to hear that. Oh, has good stuff. Um. You know, and then Lowry's like, well, I need to be, you know, more vocal, but English isn't my first language. You know, my main concern with this Bull squad is Chris Dunn and Zach Levine coexisting. I see the closeness between Chris Dunn and Lowry Markin. Those guys spent so much time with each other throughout the season, spent so much time with each other during All-Star Weekend, thoroughly enjoy each other's company. And that's been documented here within Chicago media. No, it's, so it's, it's not been even, clear on the court as well. Yeah, they, exactly. They play those well guys together play on the court. well together. Then when you get Zach in, and I like Zach. I like Zach's game. Zach is a scorer. We need that. We need that. You're going to need a guy at the end of the game to say, but, hey, I'm going I'm going by this guy. But the bad thing is, Chris Dunn's a scorer and a facilitator. See, Chris I, Dunn can light up the board. I And I know he can, and I've seen it, and I... This is but essentially I don't know what you said. I don't know if that's Chris Dunn's I, purpose MO or, on this, this on team. On this team, right. You, th- but what the thing is, though, is Chris Dunn trusts his teammates, whether it comes to Justin Holiday, who is, again, I've said in the first go away, um, <laughs> you know, Noah Vonley, Paul Zip, 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 Zip City. You know, like he trusts his teammates. The thing that I've seen with Zach, whether he wants to admit it or not, the leading scorer on this team is is Lowry marketing right? The leading rebounder on this team is Lowry marketing Why are you dribbling and going into one-on-two to one-on-three coverage when you have your power forward that is going to be all-rookie first team this year? He's going to be all-rookie NBA first team. Right. He's going to be, you know, he was a part of the all-star festivities. That means the kid's name is out here. I understand you're playing for a contract. I get it. I understand. But, dude, you can't jeopardize what your team's trying to do for your own monetary gain. You're a millionaire. And I understand more money is more money. Everybody wants more money. I get it. But if you want to be a part of something special, I'm not even asking you to be loyal. I'm just saying if you want to be a part of something special, you cannot. It's not one on five out there. And, I, dude, I love you as a player. You ain't Kobe. And guess what? Kobe couldn't do one on five either. And he's been compared to Kobe. That's why I brought up that comparison, especially right. early on in his career. His numbers are very similar to Kobe's early on in their careers. But you have guys on your team that can help you. Realize, if you need to be a spot-up shooter for a couple possessions, that's what you are. If you need to create for a couple possessions, that what you that's what you are. That's what you need to be. You need to be the star. If you want to be the star, you need to do everything that a LeBron, an MJ, a Kevin Durant, a Russell Westbrook yeah, and does. The, and to kind of touch on that... You, you compare I, I him to Kobe. I got very mad. Right, you did. That was, man, I feel like I should run through a wall right now. Thank you. <laughs> but to touch on that as well, like, you compare him to Kobe. All right, you compare him to to what? Kobe never won without Shaq or Paul Gasol. Exactly. Michael never won without Scotty. Exactly. You know, Kevin Durant never won without two of the best shooters in our lifetime. LeBron needed Wade and Bosh, Kyrie, and Love. Well, that's that's a lot. Right. <laughs> they all need but, something. No, yeah, it's... It, if you're a team guy, like there comes a point in your career, and Michael had to do it too, and Kobe had to do it as well. You have to trust your teammates. You have to trust what's put in front of you, and those are the guys that are going to help you get there. Obviously, Kobe had Shaq, a top tenner. Oh, absolutely. You know, Mike, it's different conversation because while we both love what Scotty brought to, you know, the Bulls, Scotty top fifty or not top twenty. I don't. I don't put Scotty in top twenty. I, I put Scotty in top fifty, though. Oh, absolutely. No, I. Yeah. So do I. I think. So do I. Yeah, I think. Scottie, but I, but not Scotty in top twenty. No, no I don't no, think no, Scotty's no. top thirty. To be honest, I could probably name thirty players that in their career that you maybe know, didn't we're gonna win. Have to a, do that. We're going to do that. We're we'll, we'll, to sit down we'll and do dive that into day, it man. one of these days yeah. and see where they. I'm curious. Where it lies. I'm curious. But, see where I put him. Right. It, but like going into it, it's like all right, Mike. You can say that. I'm not going to say that Mike won every championship by himself because no, that's, not, that's, that's not that's not fair. true. That's because not true. the Bulls were stacked 
up and down with role players too who knew their role and obviously Mike is so super competitive that he didn't want to ever lose right you know so he kind of willed his way you know to a championship a lot of times right but I uh like going into it you, you look at these guys they they're gonna need help and Zach it comes a point in your career where you're gonna have to realize this is the team it's gonna take a whole huge load off of me and I'm still going to get paid like a superstar as long as we win. Right. Because obviously at the end of the game, I I mean, I don't know how you feel about this. I want the ball in Zach Levine's hands because he can create for other players and create for himself. I want the ball in – are you talking about the end of the game? I'm, I, it, Ten seconds ten. left in the game, I want Zach Levine. Okay. I, I do. It, be, and I do, I'm not – I don't. And that, see, I don't know if Laurie's going to be able to get that step back Dirk-like jumper. Mm-hmm. To, to be a part of his game fully. That's, so, that's who I'm putting the ball. And that's, I'm, I'm and that's, and that's something that, like, if, if it ends up being, you know, if he ends up getting that shot, I'm, I would love to see him at, at the end of the game in a post-up situation. But knowing what I know right now, Zach is going to get a shot for himself and take a shot. Yeah. And I, I'm at least going to get a good look because he can go by a lot of people. Well, the, the thing that annoys me most about, about Zach right now is the fact that he, you know, the, the leader comments, man, that's just something I don't like. It's something I don't like. And the reason I don't like it is, man, you're coming off a torn ACL. Right. You know, like you haven't been here all season. Whether you've been with the team or you haven't been with the team, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is you haven't been playing on the court the full season with the team. You have no right to say, I need to be a better leader on the court because you know in your head, and if you're not smart enough to get it, man, I'm going to let you know. I'm a little older older than you. I haven't been in the same profession of you, obviously, but you don't come in to a team midseason and say, I need to be a better leader out on the court. You haven't been here enough. You're 22 years old, buddy. You got traded by one of your teams with a torn ACL, all right? And I, I like you. I think that you can be the truth. I think you would be very, very good for this team. I think you could be a building block for this team. But I call it right now, though, if someone offers you a max contract right now, I'm dipping. Yeah. I'm dipping. And I don't think the Bulls match a max contract. I don't think but they I, do either. Do you really think Zach gets a max contract? From I anybody? think Detroit comes along like they did with Ben Gordon and offers this crazy amount of money that the Bulls aren't well, you know, willing to match. Or not just Detroit, but any team. Any team. And at that point, doesn't that change the Bulls' draft outlook at that? It does. I, it I, does. But that's the other thing, too. Are you if, really going to— Say hypothetically that happens. Your boy's coming over. Dude, you've been talking about all year. Mikel. Bridges. I, which, I see him coming. I, I, I think that Mikel fits— even with Zach, though, that's that's my well, right. Me too. Mikel, right. Mikel's a six seven guard slash forward. That right, but the game goes small anyway. Right, they're going to end up. Anyway, but Mikel you know, Laurie at a five is going to be something that I don't they're like look Laurie at. at the five. I don't either. But a shooting lineup like that oh, is yeah, exactly right. what Golden State does, and that right. wins championships now. Well, if you, you ever, know that's if you ever do look, man, Golden State does have McGee in a lot at, at C and and, and, er, and yeah, and, not at the end of the game though. and Pachulia. At, at the oh, end no, of the game, no, a lot no. it's it's the small lineup, and that's what causes the mismatches right. that um, you but, see I mean, on the court. I think for me and getting you know upset upset at Zach and stuff like that, it's just like I love Zach Levine because he's here, he's a part of the team. He said all the right things so far for the most part. Calm down the leader stuff. There's no struggle. There's there should be no internal struggle, especially now. Like you guys are sub thirty games you, of five hundred. You, you, who's leading that team right now? I, I mean, it's it's like how, how if you, you can lead from a bench, but really, how are you leading from a bench? You know, it's it, these guys at the end of the year. They're they're trying to get the lowest right pick that they can. They're trying to get down to the bottom in the cellar, and they're doing a decent job at it right. now. Now that they've shut a lot of people down, and they've they've got these injur- injuries, they can. Oh, kinda, yeah, they're going to write them off for the tank and whatever. Right. But, but I, I, like, as of now, I felt like the timing of that, that interview was kind of unfortunate for them. Yeah, me too. I, 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 I felt like it was just wrongly placed. I Honestly, but like, I would love to see that interview. CSN, like, I, I would honestly love to see that interview in the beginning of next season. I would have even better see it at the All-Star break, this year's All-Star break. Yeah, but exactly. And then you get a, like eight, nine games under his belt. Right, and you get those three in there. Don't call it a big three and get those three in as the young cord. And you say, and you ask these questions, right? You know, because obviously Zach only being eight games in, he doesn't feel entitled to say this is my team, right? You know, you got Chris Dunn who is coming 
back and, and, and getting back into his game and getting a chance to play. And Laurie, who's like, hey, man, this is my first year. I'm trying to learn the league. Right. Those are how they answer those questions. One thing I want to ask you about Chris Dunn real quick, and like you give me your honest God opinion. You're an NBA freak just like I am. Right. Grew up playing basketball together. So uh, Chris Dunn this year, you think he should win most improved player? I And we've talked about this off air. I do. I think that. I mean, I know All Depot went crazy. I know Aaron Gordon went kind of crazy, but those guys have been putting up numbers like that for a, a minute. And all those right? guys, right? Those guys have been established really in the NBA for a, a decent amount. A decent of time. amount of years. I mean, they've been stuck in cellar, you know, to, franchises for a little bit. Right. To up your game, though. To up your game from you know in your rookie year when you're the fifth pick, I believe the fifth pick in the NBA draft. To up your game from no playing time, I understand it was Thibodeau. I get it. But still, to up and to uh, up your game from three points and like two assists a game to 13 and six. And being that shows in the true. rising star And being in the rising stars game because if he was still under Thibodeau, guess what? No, he's not getting a rising star. You ain't there. Invite. I, I honestly, and it's not just because I love the Bulls. If I, I'm a basketball nut, man. I love everything about it. I love, I love everything about it. I honestly think that that kid should have a couple nods as most improved player of the year, even though we And I think suck. he will. I think he'll get a couple. Uh, he'll get some traction. I, I would like to see at least 10 or 11 votes, and then I'd be Agreed. I'd be fine with that. But Because I think all Depot's getting it because he's basically led Indiana to a playoff. Everybody loves Paul George. I am not a Paul George fan. I don't think he – I mean, not that I don't like him or his game or anything like that, but as a star, I don't think Paul George is a star. He's like that – you know what? He's like that veteran that used to be on his team that can kind of get you there, but would never get you there. Danny Granger, right? I don't well, see that. That was a replacement for Danny Granger, and we talked about this while we watched. Oh, when years they played and together. years ago, yeah, when they were playing and, together. They couldn't play together, and it was their game is far too similar. And I, well, I'm with you on that. Um, I don't think that um, Oklahoma City really has a decent three core either. When you look at, I, I like Russ, and I. I like Paul George. I like Russ and Mello. But Mello is done. Like oh, his, 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 he's not the guy anymore. He, he is. It's like, wait. They almost throw him in the corner and say, hey, man, shoot. When if he, you get the ball, shoot it. Right. Right. I mean, well, if you look at it, he's a lot like Wade. Yeah. There's only one freak left from the 2003 NBA draft, and I know you guys are going to be shocked by this. It's not Kirk Heinrich anymore. He's getting up there in age. It's, it's LeBron. He's right. a freak, and he's going to continue to be a freak. That's what they call freaks of nature. Dwayne Wade, Carmelo Anthony, those guys are they're winding down. Bosh yeah, has gone out the NBA. You well, know, I mean, unfortunate heart issue. With right, that but I mean, even I, even, his... even in Bosh's, I mean, before he got diagnosed with the blood clots and stuff like that, he was kicking some ass in Miami without LeBron and, and with Wade there. Right, but I mean, you could see in his game he just didn't have that Chris Bosh, the Chris Bosh you came to know and love in Toronto. Kind of hard then, when everybody kind of evacuates from that whole thing. Right, too, but as he well. wasn't as explosive no, as he was. No, before. absolutely. Well, and, and that's 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 a that's lot of the blood clot, blood thing clot issue. That's that's keeping your that, energy. I'm up curious to see what he would be like. Like if that would have never happened to him. Chris Bosch was a beast in Toronto. Dude, absolutely. Could you imagine? Could you imagine? And and I'm not an uh, advocate for players staying loyal. I'm not. I Do I wish selfishly for Chicago sports if we get a star for them to be loyal? Of course. I'm that's stu- fandom. I'm that's, that's fandom. I'm stupid, you know, but I get why they leave. I understand it. Ben Gordon, I don't. I don't get that. Fuck. You know, Screw him. I swore, <laughs> I swore on the podcast. Anyway. Um, We're allowed for that. Oh, we are allowed for that. I've, yeah, okay. But anyway. I we try, get one. Ricky told us we get one. We get two, one. So we can't say it. Okay, we can't say it again. Right. But um, <laughs> Chris Bosh, if he would have stuck around Toronto with like. Poof, man. With, with Kyle Lowry? I don't know if they would have got Lowry, Rosen. though. Because remember, Lowry came from like, you know, the Rockets and stuff like that. I don't know if they would have got Lowry. But if they, they did have DeRozan. Right. Like I wonder what that would have been like if they would have got a serviceable point guard and they would have been able to We should dive into that one time and just kind of look oh, back. I, I know, know that's not like, us. Well, I know we're Chicago we're based, Chicago, but teams but still, that that's interesting. Yeah, like, maybe like a like what, a like teams that could have been. Right. Yeah, absolutely. That'd be I great. mean the Bulls have plenty of their what ifs going through our years. Well I'm telling you what, right I mean, now. What man, if Michael wouldn't have left? What if they would have got Kirk Heinrich out? Oh my god. Here we go. 
That's a perfect that's usually when the thing point. ends. That's a perfect transition. That's, why, that's point. when we end that. I, I do right want to plug something real quick. If you guys are ever thirsty, you should have a smart water because <laughs> they're they taste like water and they they're do good. pretty good from the clouds. And then we are sipping on today. You know, because we did this in the first podcast, we were obviously we we're just hanging we're out. We're gonna keep going. Beer. We're gonna keep going. But we we're having a. I'm having a Galaxy Hero, and this was actually my first ever. Well, we both had both. Of these, uh, which was fantastic. Northwest Hero. Northwest and Kyle Hero. says I've had one before. He I don't had, remember. He doesn't remember it though, which I, is normal. That's fine. But <laughs> this is my favorite one man i used to be a huge anti hero guy but i love galaxy hero but yeah i went with the denali hero here for the second denali one. hero is good the purple one. what was the other one for summer that the sun crusher yeah the yeah, sun crusher coming, coming back oh I, yeah we're, i'm, we're I'm ready a fan for of that some sun crusher. yeah absolutely but that's a perfect transition point we would like to uh have our first fake sponsor this was a segment that kyle and i had written down on a piece of paper before <laughs> um it's called human dog cages if your spouse is out of line put them in a cage shout out to our buddy aaron Oh, oh no! Just this. All right, transition time. Transition into to his Bears favorite talk. team. Yeah, to his yeah, yeah. Transition to his favorite team. Bears talk here. So, um, well, you first know, we're gonna we're gonna dive into. Do yeah, I, if I'm gonna take this over, go ahead. Go, ahead, go ahead. We're gonna take it's over to some some Mitch Trubisky talk because uh, he was at the Bulls game uh, last night or two nights ago, and uh, he was approached, had an interview, um, was real off the cuff, um, talking about the acquisitions of obviously a Rob and. Um, Taylor Gabriel, Gabriel and uh, talking with about Matt Nagy because there hasn't been a lot, which I've been kind of surprised about. There hasn't been a lot of Mitch Trubisky, Matt Nagy talk. Oh, yeah. Opposed to uh, like are you talking about like media wise, I, and, and not just that. I mean, obviously, like there's been when Nagy was signed, there was a lot of talk yeah. about um, his relationship with Mitch Trubisky, but you haven't really gotten a lot of takes from the mouth of both of them. Oh yeah, absolutely. So especially I thought that, like, from Mitch, Mitch is a. Yeah, Mitch. Well, Mitch he's has been one, working out a yeah, lot. He's he, one of those dudes, though, man, that are like under the radar, which I love. Yeah, I like as, it too. As it's not like Cal- that's what that's why. Well, I want. our last real quarterback was with uh, Chris and Cavallari, so you know what he right, was he doing was, all the time. You know where he was. You get can to you see, blame him? You get to see his bare ass on her Instagram. Can you blame him? I wish I had a tight ass like that. <laughs> Jesus. Go ahead. So we're gonna we're gonna dive into Mitch Trubisky. He obviously, uh, was approached at this uh, this Bears game, and he had a lot of things to say about the new acquisitions. And uh, Rich Campbell wrote this on Chicago Tribune, um, talking about. I'm just gonna read a couple excerpts that Mitch uh, Trubisky said regarding the uh, the new offense and a lot of things coming in. That's a good uh, article. It's actually a really good article. It by is. The way. Dude, I'm going to plug it just because I know that, you know, as a Bears fan, you should look out and read it. And there's a lot of things from this that I think gives, like, the, you know, the bird's eye view of what what's going to be next year for right. the Bears. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. And uh, he says, can't wait. It's going to be a very explo- – it's going to be very explosive. I'm assuming that was asked about the offense. Um, we're going to see a lot more uh, run run pass options. Can't we're going to see a screen game, uh, get the ball out quick, and we're going to uh, do some deep shots. Everything that I'm good at that you've seen at North Carolina and some stuff we even ran last year, which kind of we're going to kind of just we're going to as as we're as we go here we can you know address each each comment here. Mitch Trubisky sounds really excited, which is like, great. Which and, and if you listen to the interview, I don't. I'm not sure if this was actually from the interview or this was like kind of off the off the camera. But listening to the interview, Mitch Trubisky seems ready. Like, and all these guys are working out together and ready to go. And it's really interesting Isn't that he and Kelly with Kevin White in them. He was with Kevin White. Uh, Taylor Gabriel was walking around. Uh, Soldier Field with his or Hallis Hall with his jersey, with his, with his I jersey saw on, yeah, yeah. Um, which I thought was hilarious. I love that they see something in that kid, though. Right, it, and a I couple mean, established receivers see something in him, which is awesome. And they were talking, um, uh, they were talking the other day about Mitch Trubisky. Uh, Ch- Chase Daniels was talking about how they had studied a lot of the quarterbacks in the league um, who were doing a lot of this run pass option type, type stuff, and the Bears run a, ran a little bit of it last year towards the end and Chase Daniels was saying how impressed he was with Mitch Trubisky and how his skill set really fits this offense and I think it's it's kind of like opening the door without um Matt Nagy coming you can really see why Matt Nagy chose to be here right because I mean at the end of the day if you look at Mitch Trubisky's skill set he could throw the ball deep he's great on the run he is a guy who could walk up and identify a defense. It's basically like an untapped potential type thing. Right. It's like when you see it this is. for Nagy's purpose and in his agenda is like you see, okay, if I go to Chicago, I know I have 
this kid that I've been I've looked at that can be the real deal. I'm not saying he is now, right. but he can be with the development become the real deal. And and you know what, dude? As we've gone on, as we've talked about the Bears, and unfortunately, like if you guys want an argument show, it's not going to happen here because we usually agree with everything about the Bears because like we're just so. It's not. Well, this isn't. This isn't pessimistic. first take. Yeah, I'm, right. At the end of the day, we're going to talk Chicago Bears, and if we, if you we, might get those times during oh, the year. We disagree me, a lot. We do, but um, but you're not going to get that here because we, there's there's a lot of times that we take the, the obvious look at at sports, and that's that's what this show is going to be a I lot feel of. That but Nagy really, came Nagy here is because Trubisky shows the quality of this kid can win me games no matter who I put in front of him. A Rob and Gabriel are, are are a plus. Cohen and Howard are a plus. Um, Shaheen and um, Burton are going to be pluses. But who knows with this kid? Maybe he makes, um, you know, give me a third, a fourth receiver here, Bellamy. Maybe he makes Bellamy with a full year really working with well, a, a That's month, another a, thing a we can dive in at the end of here because we're going to talk a lot about free agency. Right. Well, I'm just saying, like nobody superstars but, like Brady and and Aaron Rodgers, have right? Done. That, absolutely. I mean, there's there's been a lot. And of... And I'm not saying Josh Bellamy or nobody. I'm you. No, it's I, that's not what I'm saying. But you're not. I'll say it. Go ahead. Okay. He's a nobody. You saw. No, but like we'll we'll dive in some more of the interview here. I'm going to read another excerpt. Right. From Go it. ahead, man. I love um, this. We're just going to do more of it. We're going to get the ball out to our playmakers in open space, and just hide the ball, play action, more flashy stuff in the backfield to hide the ball. It's not going to be run right at you. It's going to be more tricky stuff. Which I love that. This, this is the that one, one expert, expert that I yeah. I highlighted. Yeah. Because I said, never in my Bears life, and these guys, the the guys who have watched Our the team, Bears life. You know, the guys who have watched the team longer than we have, comment below. But have you seen a coach that is going to take this skill set and use the word tricky? Because you know that these two have talked. Oh, absolutely. You know, and, Are you serious? He's, he's obviously gotten the playbook. He's going to utilize the hell out of this. He's, he's gotten the playbook. So Tr- Trubisky's looking at it this offseason going, we're going to run this. This is tricky. Right. You know, so you're going to see, obviously, we watched um, last year that they had the um, the two-point conversion play on, on the goal line there where uh, Mitch Trubisky actually, they, they, they like, Lateral the ball a couple times. Oh yeah, absolutely. And they, then you they, saw they in the Super Bowl. With you saw in the Hawkins Super Bowl that you know, um, with the Eagles, they threw that off the Burton through to uh, Nick Foles, right in the end zone. I'm looking for things like that. And I want. I, I want gonna, to have the I, smartest. I, I think I want we're to have the see smartest stuff. mind. Right. I really like. We're gonna see stuff like that. And as a Bears, I'm, fan, I'm convinced. As a Bears fan, if you look at like what they have defensively. They're going to be able to take chances like that because if the defense is truly what it was last year, still top ten, so. and if it's going to get better, because I think throughout the draft they're going to address depth. I, right, I have at, a few people written down here too. At, so, and that's a, we'll we'll get into at right. eight. I think that we're going to um, look more into what this is going to be, um, picking wise, and we can dive deeper into it in another pod. But oh, absolutely. If if they would like to see maybe a Bears mock. Pop, we, we could definitely two, three, do, you know, like or like, uh, rounds round one, through, one seven. through seven. I we don't have a third, but still rounds one through seven. If you guys want to see a mock pod, let us know. We'd love. I mean, we'd damn, love to do it. We'd love to dive into that. That'd be something that'd be really, really, really fun for us. Like, I yeah. mean, because we're both. And lo- I think we've kind of planned it. We're probably just gonna do it. Yeah, we'll just, honest. Yeah, honestly, if you don't want to see it or not, we're still gonna do it. But, but yeah, you, to, like to dive into the whole thing. I'm really happy that like tricky is like. Gonna be something in the play, in yeah, the Bears me too. playbook because me too. I've never been more excited for an offense. Minus, I, I was excited when they, excuse me, when they had Tressman and they had the two beasts on the outside, and we all looked at Matt Please Forte. Please let me this. elaborate on that. But no, and we just give me one second. Okay, I'll, I'll and like I was excited about that, but I think I'm more excited for Mitch Trubisky and RPOs and tricky. We think it's going this way. We're but going, it's going this that way, way, right? Then I am Absolutely. about. Hey, I'm going to throw the ball deep up to these two guys who are six five, right? Like, and and the Bears have a guy in that now that they they just signed hey, in free Rob. agency. But like, it's not going to be dead right at you, as he said. It's football is. It's going to be. I think you're going to see a lot more east to west. It's intellectual. You're going to see a lot of two running back sets. You're going to see a lot of two tight end sets. Can you wait for but that? No, I can't. Because I've never seen that. I before. can't wait till you and I. 
We go, man, we bring our, we go bring our stupid burgers. We go bring our hot dogs. We have our beer. And I'm going to tell you something right now. Kyle and I love going to games. Me and Juice, we go to games. We interact with everybody. We bring the bag set. We bring the washer set. We have a fun time. I guarantee you the first game we go to this year, as much as I love it, I ain't drinking. Down. I, I'm putting it down. I want to see what this team is really going to do. And where I wanted to elaborate off of you're talking about Trustman is a few, I mean, a few comments that came to us, which, again, we are so grateful. Keep commenting no matter what. But, I mean, we like I said, we want to interact with you. We want to be different. I don't want to be that YouTube channel. I don't want to be that that iTunes podcast. I don't want to be that Twitter that where you, you know, ask us a question and then you're like, okay, well, I just wasted 10 seconds of my day because they never answered me. Right. I don't remember your name, but I remember you said, you know, you've been a fan since 1978 and we don't know what we're talking about. And that, that could be the absolute case for sure. But exactly what he just said, I guarantee you are excited about Trustman. I guarantee it. We've been excited we so all many times. Were. Well, I was talking to the fan, too. No, I'm just saying, like, as a fan, we all were we excited, all were to excited, excited about Trestman. Like, Shit, I was excited about... You don't lie about it and say that you knew he was going to be a bust because we know you're lying. Yeah, we know you're lying. And I'm going to be honest, 100% honest with you, you know who else I was excited about? The greatest show on turf. I was excited about Mike Martz, Kurt Warner, Isaac Bruce... You know, um, yeah, they never had the skill set to Torrey really Smith. run what they wanted to right, run there. Right, but I was but... still excited as a fan about it. The reason right. I don't go over the top now is because I've been let down so many times. But I feel in my heart that something is different this year. Something feels good. Something feels right. I'm older than I was when those guys came over. I'm more experienced. Me and Kyle have been going to Bears games since we were little kids. My old man, you know, I love him to death. Bears season ticket holder since 1984. He bought... The year we went and did our thing, you know, 85, 86, he is a season ticket holder. That's when he was approved was an 84, 85 season. He's, you know, he has witnessed it. Kyle and I, me and Juice, Buzz that's and all, Juice. That's all we got. That's all that's we all have we got to left. see. And then we could die happy sports fans. Obviously, I got a kid on the way. I cannot die. But as a happy <laughs> sports fan, like we got this banner here with the White Sox. Kyle, like I told you, we – Juice is ordering the Cub one. one we're gonna get right there. We got the Bulls one. I don't have a Blackhawks one. We like hockey. We're just those, you know, they're pretty expensive, man. And then we have the Bears one, and that is the only one. I gotta I actually do have a Hawks banner over there, but that's the only one. That's all I gotta see. That's all we have to see. And I'll tell you something right now. Like to everybody, this year is so crucial because obviously, I'm not saying we're gonna win a Super Bowl. No, I'm not either. I don't. I don't even. And then go back to the pot. I don't think we're gonna make the playoffs. No, I don't think we're gonna make Next playoffs. Year, I don't either. think we're gonna make the playoffs. But I think we're gonna show tremendous potential, and I think we're gonna show that we're gonna be a team to reckon with for years for to years come. to come because we're gonna have that guy who's gonna teach our quarterback right how to be this beast in his system. And, and because again, he's he's been waiting for a guy like this right because. As much as he liked Alex Smith over there, Alex Smith could not throw the deep ball. No. And going into the, the article, oh, you yeah, read can it. You, can you read that for everybody? He real says quick? that Alex. I think it's maybe in the other. It's not. Oh, it's in, in the other one. one. It's in a different article, but he was. He said that me and Alex have the same kind of skill set. Mitch that, said this, by the way. And, and Mitch Trubisky said this that um, he's able to throw the deep ball, which me and Brad both, when we read that, we're like, dude, Alex Smith doesn't throw the ball farther than fifteen yards. Not very accurate down downfield. Obviously makes plays with his feet, like Mitch. Right. Very accurate, like Mitch. Going to be able to walk up and identify a defense, like, like Mitch. Mitch. Right. So when you look at it, yes, a lot of the things, the skills, the, the the traits make sense. But Alex Smith can't throw the deep ball. He's he's not a guy who likes to do that. You know, and and obviously Alex Smith's made a huge career for himself. Right. Doing a lot with his feet and you know being that guy who doesn't turn the ball over, which Mitch. As, as bad as his team was last year, and <laughs> we were not good, was pretty good with turnovers. I thought, yeah, going into it, he would be a lot worse being a, a rookie quarterback and a guy who only had 10 starts at North Carolina. But he really did um, impress me with his ball security. Um, but yeah, so that, that's a great article. I'd plug it in. There's more that we could read off of it. He says he's going to throw the deep ball, he's going to get the ball out quick, he's going to be mobile. But we've kind of we've hit it on those things. There's you know one that, thing that I'd like to bring up to you. We're, we might go a little over the hour, not much, but we. I, there's one thing I want to bring up to you about defense for us. I mean, obviously, I got like you know the no, fact that's that, the thing. Like we've we've 
as free agents, we've already addressed a lot of the offensive problems right. going into this year. We have a tight end that they like to get in open space in Burton. You know, they have this outside threat now in Allen Robinson. They've kind of shored the uh, inside slot position with Taylor Gabriel. Right. Um, and we're going to kind of dive into the defensive side of it and, and maybe a little bit of offense because there are some remaining free agents out there that – I think me and um, Buzzweed both agree that maybe might be decent fits for the Bears at the right price. And, and that's the thing, at the right price. There's only these. one I really want to bring up to you. And uh, obviously I think we need another pass rusher. I, uh, you Agreed. Know, but I'm not going to get into that. We'll get into that next podcast. We'll actually get into that also, like closer to preseason and stuff like right. that. We'll as, f- as we know more and more of what's going to be available, available and what and we're doing. But there's one guy I want to ask you. I'm going to start it off with, like, a simple question, then I'm going to dive into the actual question. So, like, are you sold on Adrian Amos? Because I'm sold on Eddie Jackson. Are you sold on Adrian Amos? If, if If a player presentates himself at eight... Presents himself at sorry, presentate. That sounded terrible. Presentate. Yeah, see, it's, it's hashtag been a couple, presentate. It's been a couple uh, over seven percenters here. We're getting burgers after. Right, and no, I if a guy presents himself at eight, that is a pure upgrade over Adrian Amos. I'm I'm fine for that. Can I ask you a, a free agent that might be an upgrade over Adrian Amos? Sure, go ahead. Okay. This. This this podcast has nothing to do with anything political, by the way. All right, so just so everybody knows, it never will bring, be. We're not going to bring up never, politics. Me and him will, will never ever never say who talk. we vote for, and never. So go ahead and I don't shut vote. it off. Right, exactly. So, um, Eric Reed, I'd be okay with it. Okay, so see, so would I, and I, that's the thing. I mean, I like, don't. He is twenty six years old. See, I was 26. thinking more. Like Fitzpatrick at eight. Oh, at I love Mickey point. Fitzpatrick. Yeah, but and I think that he's a, him more with, of a corner him with safety. Jackson though, he's more of a because corner, they though. played together. Right, would have that. Um, be on that same wavelength. If he's together. not there, I don't think Denzel but, War- Denzel Ward's from Ohio State is a, a corner and, and very very good. By the good way, player. Fitzpatrick's also a corner. But Eric Reed is twenty six year years old. He's a Pro Bowler, and I know they don't mean sh- a lot in the NFL. <laughs> People decline to go to the Pro Bowl every year, but. Eric Reed kind of got the raw end of a stick in my mind. I don't care what you do. I don't care where you are. If you're going to win me football games, guess what? Him and I, we pay to go to these football games. If you're going to win us football games, Eric Reed is is something that I think next to Eddie Jackson with Amos coming in off, you know, when they need to rest, playing either free or, you know, or strong. I think that can be something. And I, I could see it. I, I wanted to, and, and I'll counter. I think that EJ Gaines is a better fit at corner mm-hmm. for the Bears. Okay, and you you keep or you draft Minka Fitzpatrick. Or what do you think about Denzel Ward? No, I no, love Denzel. Ward. I, He's a hard hitting guy, and, and he can cover. I would rather have Jeff, and we said this on the last podcast. Yeah, Josh I want Josh Jackson from because I, I I want as much ball hawk guys as I can. Because last year the Bears only had eight interceptions. Well, you know Tinu resigned. And like, and I know that like looking at the defense, like they were being attacked in a different way mm-hmm. because obviously the offense couldn't score. So it was to me a lot of the offenses were more conservative, right? Than they were because they were trying not to turn the ball over, give short, uh, short field to the Bears a lot more. You know they were willing to punt and play the field position game because they knew they weren't driving down the field. Right, I get it, but. I want ball hawk guys because I think that the defensive line, while we need some depth, was a lot better than we look at it last year. Right. And I know they lost a little bit on it going into free agency, um, but I felt like we got a decent amount, a decent enough pressure from Hicks, from Leonard Floyd when he was on the field, from Goldman. Um, Trevathan, you know, even when he was in, I, right? And I mean, I know Pernell McPhee is he, gone. Bye. But but when he was on the field, he was getting pressure on right. the outside. Is when he was um, coming from the outside. I just I want guys who are going to turn the ball over. I want right. to go back to that Bears, Mike Brown defense. Those 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 defenses when Lovey was here, uh, when it was yeah. like we're going to get three turnovers a game. Remember Mike Brown? And and we're going to give our offense three more shots. Remember the color mics. Absolutely. Mike Brown and Mike Green. Absolutely. Mike Bears Brown and Mike Green. Mike Brown, I met him, actually. I also met Whoa, Mike Green. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm just – those dudes signed my hat, 
And at the same time, it's at my dad's house. He won't give it to me because he's a douchebag. <laughs> but you get one douchebag. Awesome. The color mics, man. Mike green, Mike brown. Not skin color, whatever. That's their last names like that. Those guys are so – I would love to see a defense like that. And with, you know, our linebacking core, I'm still a fan of. I love Floyd. I love Trevathan. I don't care what any Chicago fan says. Kayakowski played some badass games last year. Right. And we just resigned Team you today. Mm-hmm. I'm saying that if we can land a Mika Fitzpatrick or a Denzel Ward to be that third corner. See, but I don't think that the, or Josh Jackson. That's, that's kind of going into like the whole draft here, though. I don't. Oh, right. I'm just saying that it's Eric, tough to. It's tough to. The Bears have done enough in free agency to be flexible at eight. Right. I, like that's I, the cool thing, and right. I know that's a that's. Like so, I think going into this draft, they're going to try to be as flexible as they can, right? And they're going to evaluate by who they think's the better player. They're right. not going to evaluate by by need here. I think we'll I think we'll dive more into that too once draft time comes. I'm just I'm saying that there's so many things that we can do to have a top five offense and a top five defense, and you guys know what that means. That means we're coming, and I'm still a firm believer that this year we're going eight and eight or nine and seven. I will pick. I'll lock See, in I right took now. The under on that. I'll I lock seven in. And nine. I'll lock in it's right tough, now. It's a tough schedule. Right, it's a very tough schedule. But I'm locking in right now at nine and seven for the Chicago Bears. I hope to God I'm proven wrong, and maybe for this 26 year old kid here who's doing a podcast for everybody to listen to, I will be proven wrong. So I get more optimism, more hope behind my heart because I'm sick of losing. I agreed. I'm, I'm in sick that of losing. Boat. I'm sick of going to games and sitting there. And the Paying sub below money. temperature. Yeah, the exactly. Money is just so and, and, high and to go. And I'm not even drink. about it because I I will I love every second of being I there. I have fun, but like the extra cost that comes with. I'm just the saying whole, before the we parking, were twenty, the beer the, before we were even twenty one though, and we could drink there. Come on, man, four dollars for a water, right? Like six dollars for a pop. Well, we're sixteen year old kids, seventeen year old kids, and yeah, do we have a little bit of a silver spoon in our mouth? Growing up, not really. Neither of us, but our. Our dads made, you know, good decisions. I didn't have goddamn air conditioning. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I had bear season, t- you know, bear season tickets, you know. That's that's a sacrifice. One, I'll tell you what. We lived in a one-bedroom trailer. <laughs> and my dad had Bulls tickets during the Jordan era, Bears tickets during the, uh, you know, during all of it. Still maybe to this day. Maybe that's where they get that meth head comment. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. But, I just um, like messing with you. Anyway, like we really want to see this team do good, so please do not take us giving this team a bad record as we're enemies towards the Bears. No. We are the biggest Bears fan you'll ever meet. We live, breathe, we love that. We go, we have fun. That's all I got left we to see. We spend money on it. That's all we need left to see is is that. But uh, those are my things this year, man. I, I really hope the Bears can inf- improve defensively again. I mean, not that they need to. They're top ten. That's great. But – if you get a top five defense and that offense comes clicking with Nagy and Helfrich at the helm, and that's another yeah. big thing. Nagy and Helfrich, Helfrich ran one of the fastest offenses in the world at Oregon. Mm-hmm. And then you got Nagy, who obviously we saw what he did with KC. We we have the opportunity here to make something special I think special the happen. coolest thing for Mitch Trubisky, it's in if I were Mitch Trubisky, I am surrounded by people who are quarterback whispers, essentially. I am surrounded by people who are successful – with running offenses, who are going to put me in situations to succeed, and the head coach that I have is, he came here based on my skill set, and that's so there is no. And how flattering is that though? No, that's that's huge. When he ha- when he does this inter- this interview and he is so damn excited, Scroll like that why, again. Why? Sh- mm, why should he not be? Right, and that's. Uh, mm. Go Bears! Yeah, there we go, man. And that you know what? That's a perfect way to end it. Go Bears. Um, Again, I said this in the beginning of the show, but check us out on YouTube. And if you are watching on YouTube, drop a like, a comment, and a sub to the Most Valuable Podcast page. We just hit over 10,000 followers thanks to you. Absolutely. Thank you. you. Thank you for even watching us. Thank you for watching us. Um, If you're listening on iTunes, drop us a five-star rating. Throw a comment in there. We will try to comment the best that we can to And if you've seen on the last video, we... I don't know how to comment on iTunes. Uh, We'll figure it out. Okay. We'll call you. Yeah, oh, we'll be like, hey, what's going on, man? Leave yeah, your number below it. Hey, no, there you go. Yeah, leave your number. We'll call you. I don't. I'm not really sure. No, we won't. But <laughs> if you want an awesome T-shirt that me and uh, the me Juice, and the Juice man, man are wearing right here, you go to mostvaluablepodcast.com. We will have our bios up shortly. We took some awesome headshots today we for did. that. Um, you know, you go there, you order a T-shirt. 
And then uh, patreon.com slash most valuable podcast if you would like to go donate to our cause, man. Maybe help help us out with, you know, if you want better equipment, if you want to see different things that we're not doing. You know, uh, me and we will tell you this one thing. We're not going to tell you what our sponsor may be if it ever happens. If it doesn't, all right. But um, Juice and I are going to be, uh, you know, trying to get some um, – mics in here like actual yeah. nice mics where we both have the you know the whole headphone set kind of like a joe rogan kind a little of thing step up from the whole burger king yeah uh, behind it eating wobbles. though this is a great mic and it, it serves its purpose but we feel like this can become something thanks to you and thanks to all the feedback that we have gotten through and join this the army deal. early because yeah. you know the you podcast don't end up army. being like while we're like a million viewers and like and we can't respond and then you're a seahawks fan and you know you're just jumping on the twelfth man at that point. Did you just rip Tony's brother? Yeah, absolutely. All right. <laughs> no, I would not. <laughs> Andrew, you're the man. Yeah, little but uh, dab. little dab. Um, but yeah, no, it's uh, you know, we thank you for everything, and you know, absolutely. if you can check out all those all that stuff that I just plugged. Also, I'm gonna plug this real quick, and I promise I do it after every podcast for right now. Thank you for the intro song from Circus Survive. Your champion, Super Bowl champion, Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, that's where they're Pains from. Me every time. Yeah, it's all right, but they're a great band. No, man. they Tattooed are. Tattooed all over. Listen to them all week on the way to Indy this week. Absolutely, while I was great band. Um, we would also like to thank Bull Scripted for tweeting us out and telling people to be on the lookout, look out for us. So, if and you, our boy Ed Werder. Oh, oh yeah, I was gonna get to him in a minute, but also at Three Guys Sports who also tweeted us oh, out yeah. to everybody. Um, if you guys can go follow the at Bulls Sorry, three at guys. three guys three guys sports, sports are just it's as Winnie. cool as Ed Werder. Absolutely, but today Ed Werder, or I'm sorry, not today, but two days ago, Ed yeah, Werder tweeted days. us out. And uh, if you're he, new to the podcast because of Ed Werder, comment below. Yeah, seriously, comment and below. Say, hey, Ed Werder is my guy. Like, I'll tell you guys something right now. If when we're tailgating at Soldier Field, and you drop one of them comments in there that we're here because of Ed Werder, and you're from Chicago. Come on through. We got beers, we got burgers. ribs, burgers, beers, whatever you want waiting for you. Just let us know so we can bring enough. But uh, as for my man Juice, we're going to leave off like last time. As for my man Juice here, I am Buzz. This was The Outcast with Buzz and Juice. Thank you, uh, Revolution, for making great beer. Absolutely. And uh, thank you, everybody else, for watching. And we uh, will be back next week with episode three. I don't know what we're going to talk about yet, but we'll figure it out. If you want to throw us some ideas, let us know. But for us, that's it for now, man. Peace.